Let's get now a very important perspective, the perspective of the Chinese government on this visit. Chin Gong is the Chinese ambassador to the United States. He joins us now. Mr. Ambassador, grateful for your time at this important moment. Uh, the speaker is in Taiwan, as you well know. China said don't go. as She is there now. The Biden White House says this should not be a big deal. Newt Gingrich, the speaker, visited 25 years ago. Why? Why is the, the foreign ministry of China says this? It will definitely take all necessary measures to resolutely safeguard the sovereignty and territorial integrity in response to the U.S. speaker's visit. You just heard our correspondent say there will be overnight military exercises. Uh, the, it's the Biden White House that says China here is making this a big deal. Why? Well, firstly, on um, Speaker Pelosi's visit to China's Taiwan region, the Chinese side has repeatedly expressed its firm and strong opposition to the U.S. side at various levels through different channels. The Speaker's visit is a major event upgrading the substantive relations between the U.S. and the Taiwan and sends a very wrong signal to Taiwan independent separatist forces. It is a serious violation of the One China Principle and the provisions in the three signaled U.S. joint communiques. Uh, she, it she was a serious it, it, blow. Sir, sir I, I don't want to... The foundation of I, 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 I don't want to... seriously infringed on China's sovereignty and the territory integrity. Uh, so, that, that is the position. Is that, the sir, let me, sir, let me jump in for one second. Forgive me. Forgive me, please. I don't want to make this contentious, but that is the position of your government. But she says she is there in honor of the Taiwan Relations Act. I understand how difficult this is, but Taiwan has a democratically elected government. Speaker Pelosi says it is very important at this time in the world uh, for her as the top woman in the United States government, the number three person in the U.S. government, uh, to show its support. Uh, China could have just said, let it go, played it down, ignored it. Instead, the White House would say it is China looking for a provocation here. Well, the question of Taiwan is not about democracy. It's about China's national sovereignty and the territorial in in integrity. And it is uh, the aspiration of uh, the more than 1.4 billion Chinese people to achieve uh, the reunification of China. And it is an unbending will of the whole Chinese nation to defend our national sovereignty and the territory integrity. And Nancy Pelosi is not a person in street. As you mentioned, you know, he as a speaker, he's uh, number three in the US government. So her visit in whatever form, at whatever time during his tenure, you know, carries, uh, you know, high political sensitivities and it will result in the escalation of the tension across Taiwan Strait and uh, escalation of the tension in the U.S.-China relations. So we firmly and strongly condemn and protest against it. And you mentioned that, uh, you know, the, this is not uh, the first time uh, of uh, the speaker's visit to China, uh, to Taiwan. Let me say this, uh, 25 years ago, uh, Speaker Gingrich visited Taiwan. It was completely wrong. The Chinese side was firmly opposed to it from the start. The U.S. side should draw lessons from it instead of making repeat mistakes. And one mistake cannot justify the following mistakes in the same nature. Well, Speaker Pelosi says that you have to look around the world, and she sees Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Uh, she sees China uh, violating its agreement with Hong Kong about the one government, two systems. And she says, therefore, it is ever extra more important at this point for the United States to publicly make clear it stands with the people of Taiwan and its democratically elected government. Your government objects. You just condemned it. Uh, what will it do about it is the big question. Are these military exercises designed to frighten Taiwan? Will there be a break in relations, any sanctions? And what would happen in the U.S.-Chinese relationship? Well, people should not confuse uh, the question of Taiwan with uh, the uh, Ukrainian conflict. And on the question of Taiwan, it concerns China's core interest. And some people here in the United States, on the, the issue of Ukraine, they emphasized uh, national sovereignty and territory integrity. But why they do whatever they want? to damage China's core, core interest, infringe China's 
national sovereignty territorial integrity. This is a play of a double standards. So we firmly reject that. And China has every right to defend its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. We are fully justified to do what we must. The current situation is created purely by the U.S. side. So, of course, it has to bear the responsibilities. People can, so, people can have different opinions about who's responsible for the moment. We are at this moment. And as Will Ripley says, the Chinese government has announced these overnight military exercises. Uh, again, uh, that is a risk of a miscalculation and a provocation. Is it not? Is the government of China, President Xi Jinping, is he so determined to get Taiwan that if necessary, he will take it by force? Well, to achieve uh, the reunification, as I said earlier, is the firm and the strong will of uh, the whole Chinese nation. So China's sovereignty cannot be infringed and the Chinese people cannot be humiliated and the reunification of China cannot be stopped. We said repeatedly in recent time that the PLA will not you know, stay idle. And the, PIF, the duty of PLA, the China's military, is to define the China's uh, sovereignty, territory, and integrity. Mr. Best. So we will take whatever we can to respond and to protect, to safeguard our sovereignty, territory, and integrity. And our response will be very firm, strong, and uh, forceful. Full, strong, and forceful. Those are strong words. Mr. Ambassador, I'm grateful for your time today. We will watch how this plays out, and I hope you can stay in touch with us uh, in the days ahead as this plays out. I Thank appreciate you. your time today, sir. There's a obviously a disagreement about some things, but I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. Joining our conversation now, Shihoko Goto. She's the deputy director of the Woodrow Wilson Center's Asia program and the former deputy director of national intelligence, Beth Sanner. Uh, Shihoko, let me start with you first. You heard the ambassador at the end. Uh, very forceful language. The question is, will the government in Beijing back up strong words with strong actions? Well, we are already seeing some action. Before uh, Speaker Pelosi's arrival, uh, the uh, president's office of Taiwan came under cyber attack, and it, was, um, it became dysfunctional for about 20 minutes. And we are already seeing this lineup of military aggression and provocation by the Chinese already. Um, I think the best case scenario um, to conclude uh, Speaker Pelosi's um, visit to Taiwan will be, this is, this is as bad as it gets. But with the big challenge is going to be, what is going to be Taiwan's position in the longer term? Will, will China continue to pr pressure Taiwan and what will the United States do to ensure that Taiwan can actually withstand the longer term coercion that China is expected to do? And so one of the questions, Beth Center, on the table is what now? The Biden White House initially opposed this trip by the speaker. They tried gently to dissuade her. Once it was clear she was going, they decided to support her. Uh, this is Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor. And you're watching these pictures on the stage. Nancy Pelosi, she is making a very strong public statement here. Uh, she has been. Uh, on this issue for 30 plus years uh, in terms of the Chinese government and its human rights abuses. She has been a friend of Taiwan throughout that period. Jake Sullivan says he's worried now the Chinese are going to use this excuse, and you heard the strong language from the ambassador, as a pretext. Listen. A speaker of the House has traveled to Taiwan before, and members of Congress travel there all the time, including several who have already traveled there this year. So for China to try to turn what is in the historical norm into a crisis or to try to use it uh, as a pretext for aggressive action around Taiwan, uh, that's on them. And they would be the ones who'd be escalating. Is there a risk of a serious military escalation in and around Taiwan right now? There is some. Uh, certainly in the next 24, 48 hours, there is a significant risk because we are going to see some military action. As Will pointed out, the exercises are starting. And the last time we had a high-level visit, not nearly as high as Pelosi, was in 2020. And that was the Under Secretary of State for Econ. And when he went, the Chinese flew almost 40 planes across the median line, the line that is an invisible line between the island and the mainland. That was the first time that happened. 
Um, in the 95-96 crisis, we saw missiles fired near Taiwan. I expect that we'll see some things like that happen. And at the same time, we're going to see the Taiwanese Air Force. They're going to scramble and put jets up into the air because that's what they always do. And frankly, the Chinese, the way that they've been behaving recently, Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, just warned about their unsafe behavior. And so I think there is a risk of that. That said, I think that China is going to try to thread the needle. Uh, she has a lot on his plate at home and he doesn't need a crisis right now.